This is part three of how to repair a Ford Escort 1998 ZX2's air conditioning for approximately $10. I'm opting to do a voice overlay in an attempt to increase the overall clarity of this video here. And I'll have some pictures to make it simpler too. You can see the faulty part, which is my WAC relay. That's the part that will be replaced with a Radio Shack replacement. Um, the cost of that part is right around $10. You can see the pin layout of the Radio Shack part is the same as the pin layout of my WAC relay. And this is the underside of my CCRM. You can see the burnt out chip portion, which is most likely the reason why it doesn't work. And just another angle of the WAC relay. The WAC relay is the, the chip in the upper area that you can see on there. The Radio Shack chip is slightly taller than the WAC relay, but it still fits within the housing. About the same dimensions, um, width and length, but just the height is taller. All right, right in this area here, I'm gonna actually show how to do the actual soldering portions. Um, one good thing to think about is when you're doing the soldering, whatever surface you're doing it on, you may have a uh, slight burn marks. So doing it on a wooden table might not be such a great idea. I just ended up using a uh, folder that I didn't really care about. It was kind of a laminated type of folder and so that worked pretty decent. There are a lot of types of solder. You're going to make sure and choose electrical solder. You can usually tell the difference between electrical solder and other types of solder by its core. It's called a rosin core. Basically just has rosin within the center of the solder to be sure and clean out impurities. And generally it's a little different uh, type of metal they use as well. At this point, you can see that I completely removed the WAC relay. That's the empty space there. Right here, 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 and here are the points where the five pins will stick through the PCB board. This is a single layer PCB board, so the pins will go all the way through the back of the, p the PCB. When you put the solder on the back of it, you'll heat up the actual pins, not the board, You'll heat or the solder, you'll heat up the pins and we will put the solder next to the pins and it will touch the pins and it will have the solder pull right to it. This area, because I didn't remove all of the solder very well, because I did not use a desoldering wick or a solder sucker, you can tell that I am struggling on getting this to work. So use a desoldering wick or a solder sucker. All right, here we're getting into the actual soldering portion. Now you see I have my new WAC relay. All five pins are pushing through the holes. They'll stick all the way through the back side of the PCB. And you'll want to clean off your tip to be sure your tip is cleaned. I just used uh, steel wool, which is a pretty decent method to be able to clean off your WAC. And your method here is you need to put the soldering iron's tip in direct contact with the actual pins on your device. So not on the green PCB, but directly on the pins themselves. Wait until that is warm. Uh, I'm actually, I believe I had mentioned already, I'm using a 25 watt iron or a soldering iron, which gets up to about 650 degrees. At that temperature, the solder should be able to pull right from the solder coil that I have there directly onto the pins and adhere to the metal near the PCB as well. If you watch a lot of videos on soldering, people will actually put the solder directly on the soldering iron. Not very good method. It will work on occasion, but quite often it will come loose. So you're really going to want to heat up your contact point, put this, touch the solder against the contact point, not against your soldering iron, and it will adhere there. So this video is pretty good at showing what needs to be done on the WAC relay, but I apologize for my, my methods here are not as skilled as I would prefer them to be. So my advice would be to use this as a point of reference as to what needs to be soldered and what areas or what methods to use for that. But ultimately I would recommend 
double checking a YouTube video or two online and of someone who does more electrical soldering than I do myself so they can be sure and do it. Even with the inexperience I had at this point in my life, I still had this function for approximately two months during the summer. It did fail at that point, but that could very well have been because of the the, wet, the relay that I added from Radio Shack is regulated at 7 to 9 volts. The actual relay that was originally on here is regulated at 12 volts. And so because of that, I'm not surprised at all that it failed in two months. That, that could be the reason, or it could be because of my sloppy soldering. Not sure which. So you'll have to do this on every single one of these points here. Let me adjust the camera a little bit. Um, when you look on these, the solder point, I realize it looks a lot more messy than it really is, but part of that is my messy attempt at removing solder. <laughs> but if you look at see how it looks kind of like a pyramid idea. So that's a pretty decent soldering job there. I don't know if there's necessarily needs that much solder on there, but it's a pretty decent solder job. So you want to make sure that it adheres to the actual pin and then also pulls the heat. The heat pulls the actual solder around to the area around the PCB as well. And obviously you need to have all five joints done. So um, I'm going to kind of zoom through the remaining points. You can kind of get the idea from the first one. It'll be the same idea on all the other ones. The upper ones be a little more careful about because they're near in similar proximity to other contact points of other portions on the PCB. So be sure you don't say solder that point right there to another chip on the PCB. Be sure and keep your solder in a general safe area. At this point, this is a great example as to what not to do. So see how my soldering iron is just trying to heat up the solder to get it done? You also see the upper right solder point there. It just looks like a ball there. It should not look like that. It should look like a pyramid, not just a blob. So it was because I didn't remove all the solder. Try your best to anticipate this will take a few hours to do assuming this is one of your first soldering now if you're doing this in a cooler room it'll be a lot harder to solder it because the solder will cool off a lot easier also if you pull the soldering iron off of the tip even for a half a second it will drop in temperature so fast so you need to hold it on that tip for quite a while before you you try to apply the solder. When you apply the solder, it should pull right to everything you need to do here. So we'll see how this one looks here in just a second. Now see, obviously this is another little bit messy one. Better than the other bottom left and upper right ones, but the bottom right one is that pyramid looking thing. So that one looked pretty good. And that one should, in theory, hold. It's not too bad. All right, at this point, let's assume that you were able to follow my video and you got to this point and your CCRM's WAC relay has been replaced with the Radio Shack part. And at this point, you will have to have a new screw to at least two minimally to be able to hold the housing around the CCRM in. And this is because you had to drill out the portion to open up the case. Obviously you see me unscrewing screws on part one, but on part one, that was actually after I'd opened up my CCRM one time prior. So the first time opening it, you will have to use a drill to drill out the corners and the entire WAC relay will open. Um, for that, you might want to be a little bit cautious to make sure you don't break anything, obviously. 
And at this point, you will just put the housing all together and put everything back together, turn your car on, and hope your CCRM has been repaired properly to have your air conditioning functioning.